This is the third video in a series where we'll be making a wave defense game. But first, in the last video, people were asked to comment and vote on a poll to pick what we'll be doing in this video. And so this video will be about menus and settings. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is go to another scene for the main menu. I'll start by adding a bitmap text. Because the resolution of this game is a little bit smaller than you would normally make, the regular text object would look blurry in this setting, so you really want to use a bitmap text if you're using any resolution that's not at least 1280. For a bitmap text you need the bitmap font and an atlas image. And the font basically tells the engine how to break up the image to turn it into a font. And the image can actually be edited with any kind of image editing software. So you can make some pretty fancy custom text with bitmap text. And now I'll just copy that to make some extra buttons for the menu. Before I make the rest of the text objects, I'm going to install the extension Button States. And add it to the play text object because then I can use that as a button. In the event sheet I can use is clicked as a condition for future events. Now I'm going to create a marker object that I can use to center the camera on. And I'm going to create two of these so that when I press settings I can tween over to the next section of the menu and show the settings. So I've got the main menu part and the settings part. And from here I can use the user interface objects like the toggle switch, buttons, and sliders to create my settings menu. And I'm going to start with the sliders. Alright, and from here, when I press settings, it's going to tween the camera over to the settings menu. Okay, and I made a settings marker object because otherwise I would need to use variables to decide which one was which, and this is less complicated. So we'll be tweening between the marker for the main menu and the marker for the settings menu. And there we go. So we're tweening to the center X of this bar and the camera's center Y position, which it's already at. So that won't change. And now I'm going to set it up so that when I press back, we go back to that original menu. And there we go. And actually I'm going to set it up so that the title stays in place while the menu changes. Just as a personal preference. So I'm going to make a new layer called title and then put that title object on that layer so it won't be affected when the camera tweens. Alright. Next I'm going to hide those bars. Okay. And now the rest of the buttons. So now when the play button is clicked, it will change the scene to the untitled scene which is our original game scene. And when the back button is clicked, we'll quit the game. There we go. 
and when the quit button is clicked, we'll quit the game. There we go. So now all of the buttons do something. Now let's make the settings do something. So we're going to create some global variables. We'll make a structure, call this settings, make one for sound and music. All right. Now we'll go back into the event sheet and make it so that the value of the sound bar or the music bar dictates that variable. And we'll use the expression builder to get the value for that bar. Okay, so when the sound slider bar is being dragged, we change the global variable sound settings that we just made to equal the value of that bar. And we'll do the same thing for music. All right, so now when the music slider is being dragged, it'll change that value. And if there is music being currently played or sounds being played while that slider is being moved and you want them to dynamically shift, you'll need to change that as well. Using one of the actions for volume of the music or sound on that channel. So you'd slot that in right here. But for sound effects, we'll use this setting when playing those. So if we go back into the main game and find the point where the sound for the gun is played, we'll change the volume to equal that global variable. So now when we change that setting, it's going to affect this sound when it gets played. So now if I open the menu and go to settings, I can change sound to be up here at 100 go back, press play, you can hear the sound played. But if I go to the menu, go to settings, change the sound down low to just above zero, it's been turned down. But every time I go into the game, it's going to be back at that same level again. So we need to save and load that in. And it's been a little while since I've done this, so bear with me. So we'll be writing a text, and we'll be writing that entire setting structure into a save file outside of the game. So settings. So when we click back, it's going to write settings into an external folder or external file outside of the game. And then, at the beginning of the scene, we'll read this text, settings from the storage settings, and store it as a temporary settings text. And then we can add the action to parse or convert this text into our global variables. So we select the settings structure. And then we're going to change the position of that slider bar based on the new value. So we're setting the sound slider and music slider to the global variables that we just read into the engine and converted to global variables because they come in as scene variables. And then we use those global variables to set the value on those slider bars. So let's try that out. Okay, now I'll press back and that's going to be where we save the settings. So now they're saved. So if I exit and preview it again, and go to settings. They didn't save. Okay, I know what I was doing wrong. So it's not just a string of the structure. You need to actually convert the global variable to a JSON first. Now select settings apply. 
So now it's saved as a JSON, then it's going to get read back in, and yeah. Okay. Preview. Settings. Set the settings. Back. Quit. Preview. Settings. And there where they were before. Awesome. Okay, so now the settings are saved when we come back in. Same thing when we go play the game. If I skip back to here, settings, they're saved. Okay. Great. So they save as a JSON here, and then they're read back into the engine as a temporary file in the scene variables, and then they get converted from that JSON to a readable global variable in settings. Cool. And then these two actions change the sliders to represent what they actually are. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now the next thing is highlighting. So when you hover over a button, it lights up. If you have a button object, this will happen the way it does already. It just changes the animation for the object. One of these objects here, the panel sprite buttons. But if you're using text like this, you instead need to add an effect to it. So we'll just add this to all of our buttons. And then we'll create a group and call it buttons. And we'll add two events, one for if the button is hovered, then the effect is on, and if the button is not hovered, then the effect is off. We'll use the group. All right, so if the button is hovered, it's on, and if the button is not hovered, it is off. And if the button is not hovered, it is off. There we go. All right, now just to make this blend in with the actual game itself, we'll snag this color and drop it in here. There we go. Now, really quickly, the last thing I want to do is add a transition, really quickly. So for this, we're gonna go to the extension list and add an extension for transition. And with that installed, we're going to add a paint shaper object, change the fill color to black, and we'll put it in the scene so it's there. Now, we need to give it the behavior first. So now, when the play button is clicked, okay, and we'll change this so that when the transition finishes, then we will change scenes. We'll want to put this on the title layer so it's above everything else, above the title specifically. And you'll notice on the edges, it doesn't reach the edges before the transition happens. I've noticed that to be a, a thing that can be tweaked. So we're going to go to add layer, call this transition, transition layer. And then at the beginning of scene, zoom, camera, transition layer by 1.5. Now it goes to the edge of the screen, and then for the other side, we'll do the same thing. So we can just set this to be a global object. Awesome. Go over here, place this into scene, add a transition layer, put this onto it, and then do the same thing. The only difference is that we need to do the reverse now for the transition so it shrinks instead of expands. So we'll set this to circular again and backwards this time instead of forwards. So when this scene starts, nope, oh, 
This is in seconds. One second. There we go. Okay. So, now when we press play, does this, and then this. And we're into the game. Now, if we make another video in this series, what would you like to see done in that video? Would you like to see enemies, power-ups and level changes, or something else? But for now, check out this video.